Hello there, Ivar by Ivar's Fly Workshop and today we are going to tie a salmon pattern which is called Harry Mary. It's a British pattern as I as I read and it's uh, from the 50s about. It's a classic pattern and uh, they're really effective and when it comes to fishing Atlantic salmon. So we start by attaching the thread to the shank of the hook and and the uh, <clears throat> there is a like a spike on the fly or a, just like the butt as you call it and we use uh, oval gold for the butt of the fly and we use oval oval gold as well for the rib of the fly and just take the gold and you have to take it between the hooks and and attach it like that. It's better to do it beneath the shank of the hook rather than on the top of it simply because we have to put the tail on the fly as well and uh, you don't want the uh, oval gold to be in the way of making the tail going out of direction. So the tail is a hat feather of golden pheasant and uh, it's pretty common when it comes to those classic patterns. Uh, golden pheasant is often used as a tail and we just do two or three loose wraps and then we adjust the feather, drag it in the place we want it to stay before we make like a, a tight wraps to secure it in the place which we want it to be in. Then we snip off the tag end of the uh, feather and uh, <clears throat> next step would be the uh, body material of the fly and the uh, oval gold of course that's the rib of the fly is oval gold like we I mentioned before and we attach that to the to the hook and then we will attach the uh, black floss there is a black floss uh, in so many of those uh, patterns and uh, I like to work with it. <clears throat> this uh, particular floss which you have, it's old but I'm using it. It's like really, it's really good. And then we just wrap the floss around the body and create the body of the fly, the permanent body. And while you're working with the floss, it's a... Uh, it's actually a good method to try to not stroke the floss too much because uh, it may take the shiny, shiny effect out of it. But it's just me. I'm, I'm rather picky on that. So we lock the floss in there. Uh, we must make, of course, must make uh, sure that we um, uh, that we. Um, leave space for the hat and for the wing and as you see I'm using my finger there to push away the uh, push away the bobbin and the thread so I'm not cutting through the thread it's like a technique technique which I developed through the years now the next step is to wrap the golden oval tinsel around the body of the fly and we lock it in place there with few wraps and actually for this fly I'm using a 12-0 uh, thread simply because on those salmon flies I which have hair wing and stuff I don't want to use too thick thread. Now it comes to the uh, beard or, or the collar or the or the uh, hackle we are not going to do a hackle 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 on this one the beard will be just enough and we are using a light blue uh, rooster or a cock feather just take it off like this quickly then we measure out the um, measure out the length of the fibers and it's okay if the end of the fibers are touching the like the barb of the of the hook it's no big deal, but some people, some people, it just depends. Some people like to keep it, 
keep it shorter than I do. Some people are keeping it a little bit longer, so I'm just kind of in between there somewhere. And uh, uh, you must never forget that that uh, it's a fish who is gonna who will be judging the fly at the end. It's not some some people on the commentary saying the fly sucks or, or it's great or something. It's always a fish at the end, which uh, it's gonna be the final gonna be the final judge. So we attach the beard to the fly and then we are going to concentrate on the wing. We need to build up like a yeah small platform there which we already did. I'm using a brown squirrel for the uh, for the wing and it's like a good chunk of uh, Good chunk of fur. So I, I do not use a hair stacker myself. I'm not used to that. I just pinch the end of the of the fur and and pull out the shorter shorter um, shorter hairs. So um, we measure it in like that. Uh, the end of the wings should be about touching the end of the um, end of the tail of the fly. It's kind of like a rule of thumb. And uh, I trim it in its place. I keep it between my finger, pinched there. And I take a drop of varnish and put it, as you see, I'm holding the hair there, or the fur. I just put it, give it like a little, like a little drop of uh, varnish. Because if we do that, it's gonna make it way easier to attach the wing and you have the length already in like measured out instead of attaching the whole thing to not like not cutting the uh, and trimming it like pre-trimming it and start to try to you know cut away the uh, cut away the rest of it so that this is the method which I, I kind of figured out it's like much better than the method I used before. So this is yeah definitely gonna be the uh, be the method I will be using, especially while I'm working with uh, squirrel squirrel fur. So the wing is in its place and the fly is almost ready. We have to give it like few whip finishing knots, a couple of them. And then just place a warness on the hat, and we are ready, good, like ready to go, good to go fishing with this Harry Murray classic pattern. Uh, the wing color should be all brown, but uh, at the moment I'm, I'm, I just have this uh, natural brown, like tight uh, hair, so we are using them instead of a brown uh, fur instead. But it's okay, it will do both ways, because uh, this fly will definitely catch some some fish, even though the wing is not not like it's described in the original pattern. So we'll just coat it with varnish there, and uh, that's about it. We are good to go. So I just want to say thanks uh, for watching, and uh, th I want to thank everybody for the uh, reaction which the channel has got it's way beyond what i ever expected and uh, i will be coming up with more videos and we are doing them both in icelandic and english to spread out the icelandic knowledge in fly tying and open the gateway to icelandic flies and fly tying methods so that's all for now and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you